almost every NLP project is going to require some form of tokenization. Today, we're going to talk about what tokenization is, as well as some common approaches and their benefits and drawbacks in NLP for developers. Simply put, tokenization is the process of breaking down a long string of language input into smaller component parts. As an example, let's look at this sentence. You will notice that when it's been tokenized, each word is a separate token. In addition, however, punctuation marks are represented by their own tokens, as well as two additional ones for beginning of sentence and end of sentence. These additional tokens might be important depending on your specific processing task. Perhaps the simplest approach to tokenization is known as white space tokenization. This is where you take in your text input and break it apart every time there's a space in the sentence. While this method is fast computationally and fairly easy to implement, it really only works if you're working with a language like English, where there are spaces between meaningful units. In Raza, we provide two built-in white space tokenizers for you, the white space tokenizer and the mighty tokenizer, which uses white space. A slightly more elaborate approach is dictionary-based tokenization. This is where you have a dictionary and then time to find matching tokens in your sentence. For languages that don't have white space between words, there's also generally an additional step here of word segmentation. This is where you not only identify which sequences of characters could be individual words, but also resolve the resulting ambiguities. This approach requires both a dictionary that's been hand-built and also guidance for what to do when you find a token that's not in the dictionary. In this case, it's been replaced with this token UNK for unknown. One example of a dictionary-based tokenizer in Raza is the Jieba tokenizer for Chinese. Another approach that's gained popularity more recently is subword tokenization. This is a collection of approaches, usually using unsupervised machine learning techniques, that find short sequences of characters that are often repeated together and assigns each of those to be a separate token. Because it's unsupervised, the main drawback of this method is that units that are identified as tokens may not actually be meaningfully different to a human user. So in this example, this is a sentence. Sentence has been identified as two tokens, despite the fact that a human user would probably only identify it as one. In Raza, some tokenizers that use this approach include the convert tokenizer and also some of the language model tokenizers used for different hugging face models. How is tokenization used? It's one of the earliest steps in almost all natural language processing pipelines. What are the benefits of tokenization? One of the big ones is that it's a standard approach in natural language processing. If you have tokenized your data, it's going to be easier for you to use other methods down the line. In addition, because longer units, such as sentences, are much less likely to be repeated than shorter units, such as words, it's easier to find more examples of a unit of analysis if it's shorter and more often repeated. In addition, tokenization allows you to use many of the different methods that are based around the idea of words, for example, using word vectors or named entity recognition. What are the drawbacks of tokenization? Probably the biggest one is that there aren't robust tokenization methods and libraries already available for all languages. That means if you're working with a lower resourced language, you may need to develop tokenization for your particular use case. In addition, tokenization methods tend to be fairly either labor or data intensive to develop. What are some common errors? The most common error I see is not using exactly the same tokenizer for both training and applying your model later on. Whatever tokenizer is used for the training data for your model must be used when you apply that model later on. Another common error is to not use a tokenizer that's appropriate for the language that you're working on. So, for example, if you're working with Thai, using a white space tokenizer is not going to be meaningful because there is no white space between meaningful tokens in Thai. Finally, if you're using a subword tokenizer that was trained in an unsupervised way, you might end up with tokens that are incorrect. For example, someone's first name might be tokenized into multiple tokens, even though it should be considered a single word. If you're interested in learning more about tokens, here are some useful resources. Tokenization is the initial phase in NLP is an older paper, but I find that it's very approachable and also has a very clear distinction between tokens and words that might be helpful, especially if you haven't spent a lot of time thinking about what a word is. Also, if you're interested in keeping up to date in specifically what tokenizers are available in Raza, check out the component section of our documentation. Links to both of these will be below in the YouTube description. Thanks for joining me today in NLP for Developers. I hope you found this helpful and it's given you a better understanding both of what tokenization is and some common methods and when to apply them in your own work.